ain't nothing down there but squalls and old men. They're Indians, aren't they? My people seek vengeance. White man cannot hold peace. He promised Shoshona Nation peace would last until moon rise no more in the sky. Oh, you and I have worked too long for this peace to allow it to fall apart now. The United States government will bring this renegade to justice and see that he is punished. Shoshone who lose scalp cannot join his fathers in council fire until white man who takes scalp is dead. Already some of my braves go on warpath. Young Buffalo Horn? How many more? Seven from Buffalo Horn's tribe. Come in, Captain Trask. You know Chief Blackfeather. You are one who walk tall among my people. Chief Blackfeather feels we're in serious danger of losing our peace with the Shoshones. I know, because of the Skora River Massacre. Frank Carter and his men. Are you sure it was Carter? No doubt of it. The description of all the witnesses tally. It was Carter. We knew him when he rode with the long knives. I should have sent the lieutenant to prison instead of cashiering him out of the regiment. One of the women he killed at the Socorro River was young Buffalo Horn's bride. Chief Blackfeather says that the entire Shoshone nation is ready to rise up in arms. Many of your people will be killed, Chief, just to avenge a crime done by a handful of whites. I want peace for my nation. I will tell my chiefs Carter will be punished by white man law. We wait until corn grow to chin. Then. Well, that gives us about uh, two weeks. Ed, if Buffalo Horn gets to Carter before we do, the Shoshones will lose faith in our ability to punish our people for crimes they commit against Indians. Mm, you know there's still a bounty on Cairo scalps in some territories, but why would bring a man like Carter back into Shoshone country? I don't know, Ed, but my guess is that the pickings are getting pretty slim. I understand most of the Cairo is headed into Mexico. Yeah, I guess to an Indian hater like Carter, all scalps look alike, especially where there's a bounty concerned. Carter must be brought back alive so that he can be tried and put in front of a firing squad. We have to prove to the Indians that our brand of justice is just as effective as theirs. Mm -hmm. How do we get to him? We have information that Carter and his men rendezvous at an abandoned mining town in the Black Hills after they collect the bounty on the Indian scalps. Black Hills? We can't get a force in there, Colonel. It's out of our territory. I know, Ed. But one man could do it.
This is Trask. I'm taking you back. The army wants to ask you some questions. You're a little out of your territory, aren't you, Captain? You or the army have no jurisdiction here. As much right here as you did at the Scoro River. I don't know what you're talking about, Captain. I've never been near the Socorro River. You left a lot of witnesses, Carter. According to the Shoshones. You take an Indian's word against mine? Yeah, I do. When the Indian is Blackfeather. Captain, I still don't know what you're talking about. Still playing the little tin soldier? You never were a good field officer, Carter. Oh, I've improved, Captain. You'd be surprised how much I've learned killing Indians. You know, you may get a chance to prove that on the way back. We run into Buffalo Horn. Here, put these on. What's Buffalo Horn got to do with it? It so happened you killed his young bride. Now he's gotten his relatives together and they're on the prowl. Now, if you get by them, Colonel Stanton's gonna try you for murder. Since when has killing a few Indians become murder? Since 10 months ago, when the United States government signed a peace treaty with them. Walter Carter. What do you expect to find? Scalps? Why just we're finding that bounty money? What for? Evidence? We got all the evidence we need. All right, Carter. Where is that money? Come on, let's go. Be that your men took the scalps in for the bounty? You say so, Captain. What do you expect them? A couple of days, maybe. My guess is tonight or maybe tomorrow. If that's true, you're in trouble. Oh, not me. Because we're going to leave. Right now. Tonight? In this country? That's right. If we run into Buffalo Horn and his braves, we're going to need all the guns we can get. We have all we need. I hate to leave my six gun behind. Just let it be. Here. When we got off to? Mano, and without his pistola. Maybe he was stuck up for the money. That ain't likely men that done it wouldn't have taken him along. You think it was red sticks? It wasn't Indians. <laughs> How you got it figured then, Leach? He's an army issue. The army got him? Looks like it took just one man to take Carter. <laughs> what would the army want with him? I don't know. All I care about is they got our money. Right? You're right. That's right.
Captain, we've been on the go since last night. If you have no regard for the prisoner, you might at least have some for the horses. You know, for a man who had a reputation like yours for abusing his horses, you certainly become a good Samaritan. All right, Carter. Dismount. We'll lead him. Lead him? Well, when are we going to stop for the night? Move out. Camp here We haven't even said no fires. You think you're going to reveal our position to your men? Forget it. Does it also attract buffalo horn? Do you really think my men are following us? I think they have a sense of loyalty to you. So they obviously think you have the bounty money. But I haven't got the money, Captain. You know, my guess is that you got it stashed somewhere. Probably back in that old mining town. And you're the only one that knows where it is. Well, as long as my men think I've got it. Captain, I figure you haven't had any sleep for about 24 hours. Tactically, that gives me a pretty good edge. Good night, Captain. How do you feel now? Tactically. You know, a man with so much in his mind, you sure sleep soundly. Well, last night I did have a care or two, but this morning I have nothing to worry about. I don't want to disturb your peace of mind, Carter, but that could be Buffalo Horn and his braves. Get your gear together. Saddle up. But, Captain, without breakfast? <sighs> we, we picking up any distance on him, Leach? It don't look that way. 
can't understand it. We keep driving our nags and they keep walking. Maybe we drive our horse pretty hard, no? We got no choice of where to get to them before they get to the army. How long do you think that's going to be? Uh, about eight hours. I figure they got a pack horse with them and it's going to slow them down some. See them hoof prints? It's a pack horse. Mm. Let's go. Whoever it is, there's still 20 miles behind us. Move out. Hold it. What's the matter now? for scalping Indians? That's young buffalo horns work. Never would have happened if you wouldn't kill a squaw. Well, if it hadn't been his squaw, they'd have found some other excuse. You'll never convince me that these savages will respect any kind of peace treaty. There'll only be peace when these savages are all dumped into their own happy hunting ground. Yeah, and a lot of innocent settlers along with them, huh? Well, as an officer, you ought to know that in any kind of war, there are expendables. This particular war is going to end with you, Carter. Let's bury him. Oh, by the way, do uh, you have any uh, appropriate words you'd like to say over his grave? Dig. I'm your prisoner. According to Army regulations, I don't have to dig any graves. Start digging. You're going to need a lot of practice. were at peace. They were, until two weeks ago. We were on our way to Arizona to prospect for gold. For years, my grandfather's been dreaming about it. The great adventure, he called it. But the Indians, those murdering red savages. I agree with you, miss. There isn't a good Indian alive. You may come back, we better get out of here. I've dedicated my life to killing every Indian I find. Shut up, Carter. Come on, Miss
gonna lose our dinero if we don't get out of here pretty quick. They are a whole day ahead of us. Not no more, they ain't. Took them a spell to plant the body. And look there. Them hoof marks is the pack horse. We know they have a pack horse. See how deep their marks are? See? Yeah. Well, I calculate it's packing a passenger now. That's gonna slow him up some. Hey, Jake! Find anything? Uh, nah. The men just didn't leave nothing but a bunch of doodads. Well, I sure would have liked to meet up with the lady that wore this thing in my jig. Maybe you'll get your chance. I ain't gonna go digging up no grave just to get an introduction. You think she's the passenger they be caught? Maybe. Sweet Jasper. She sure smells good. Drop that thing, Jake. Let's get out of here. Miss Medford isn't one of your tough troopers. I think she's ridden enough for one day. How do you feel, Sally? I am tired, but I can go on if you think we should. Oh, there's not enough trees for concealment. <laughs> you know, Captain, you surprised me. An old cavalryman like you, you fought enough Shoshones to know that they like open country for an attack. I wasn't thinking about the Shoshones. What do you mean? My prisoner's men are probably following us. Miss, believe me, you have nothing to fear from them. Give orders to dismount. Oh, so sorry, Captain. We must always conduct ourselves in proper military order. Once I have a cup of coffee, I'm sure I'll be all right. Sorry, we can't have any fires. Can't you be a gentleman and offer the lady a cup of tea? I think some cold water would be just as refreshing. She ain't gonna go no more. All right. We'll rest for a couple of hours. Mm, afraid my food isn't very tasty, Sally. I'm not really hungry. You should keep your strength. Try this piece of dried beef. Go ahead. Thank you. The prisoner would be grateful for anything the captain would care to throw in. Thanks. Where are you from, Sally? Hagersville, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's a beautiful town. I rode through there once with General Buford during the war. Our farm was on the road to Gettysburg. The captain distinguished himself at Gettysburg. Turned back a whole Confederate brigade, single-handed. Now well, we got to figure out a way to get you home. There's no one there for me to go back to. My grandfather was the last. Uh, why is he a prisoner? The army wants him for murder. Can you imagine that? 
They call killing Indians murder. What would they do to you? Put them up before a firing squad. For killing Indians? They ought to give him a medal. I agree with you. Keep your mouth shut, Carter. The prisoner has a right to defend himself. I'm not holding a military court here, Carter. You'll get your trial when you get back to headquarters. Ha! <laughs> trial? Like the one I got when I was railroaded out of the service? You think that was too much for uh, selling whiskey to the Indians? Well, those Indians were the only evidence you had against me. And they lied through their teeth. You know, if you had your way, Carter, you'd take the Indians for everything they had. Mm, not everything, Captain. Just their scalp. Sit down and keep your mouth shut. And when I'm free, I'm going to kill the Indians that murdered her grandfather. Right. You're beginning to look more like an Indian all the time. Come on, Sally. Some claws and whiskey in my saddlebag. Get them, please. Can I have a swig of that? Don't do the bite any good? I know. It sure would help my nerves. He's not an animal. You might at least unchain him from the tree. Well, we got to move out of here. You're not going to make me ride with this leg. Anyone bitten by a snake should stay absolutely quiet. Should have been away by daybreak. Will you be risking his life? There's a chance we have to take. If his men overtake us, I can't vouch for your life or mine. They couldn't be any more inhuman than you are. As a matter of fact, miss, they're real gentlemen. What's the matter? I don't know. I feel a little dizzy. You see, the poison's already beginning to work through his system. He'll work it off. Help me with the gear. Well, I'm not budging from this spot until he gets better. Go ahead. Uh, put the handcuffs on me. Chain me to a tree. I don't think that'll be necessary. Couple hours ahead of us now. Somebody? She don't like rattlesnakes. Come here. See that footmark there? What is it? Well, I guess it was that sweet smelling female of yours. Ooh-wee. Guess we don't waste no time dallying around here.
do that? I'll do what I have to do. Come on, Connor. <clears throat> I've never seen such lack of concern for a man in my life. I don't have time to justify my actions to you, Miss Medford. Now, will you please mount up? Come on, Connor. I suppose you know this means the poison has gone to his brain. I know. He needs a hot stimulant. I'll get some wood for a fire. Oh, aren't you afraid the smoke might reveal our position to his men? Captain Trask, if this man dies, I'll I'll report you for mistreating your prisoner. You do that, Miss Matthew. In the meantime, get all the blankets you can find and wrap them up in them. Uh. 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 Captain? Captain, I think he's dying. Give me blankets. Uh, 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 look. Well, don't stand there like an idiot. Get his keys. You'll kill him. That's exactly what I'm going to do if you don't unlock these handcuffs. That snake didn't yeah. bite you at all. Oh, it bit me all right. It didn't affect me very much. I've been bitten before. In the Army, we call it diversionary action. Right, Captain? we got here when we did. Should have gotten here sooner. Where's that sweet smelling filly you had with you? Never mind that. Where's our money? 
Money's in Holcomb. Gee, well, my mano, we have to go all the way back. It's over four thousand dollars. <laughs> That's over thousand dollars a piece. Why wait in here? Vamos, hombre, vamos. Where's your horse? Top of the hill. Come on. There? That's a good place for him. He ain't gonna stay that long. Yes, he is. I'll fix him, Heifer. Just say. Put it away. Jake. woman you had with you. My guess is she's on her way to the 33rd Cavalry headquarters with a pack horse. Oh, dog, don't it. I sure have my mouth puckered for that muchacha. Go after her. We need the provision. I better go with you. She may be a tiger. <laughs> I sure like them when they like animals. Go ahead. Leach and I will be on the trail to Holcomb. Is she a good looker? Nice Eastern good. And then to get done with her, she's gonna come all unraveled. Miss Eddie, there ain't no way to treat a cavalry horse. Don't you touch me. Don't you dare touch me. Why, ma'am, we ain't going to touch you unless we got your permission. I saw you men kill Captain Trask in cold blood. Why, ma'am, that, that's the fortunes of war. It was either us killing him or him killing us. What are we going to do with her? Well, now, we got to think about that. Hey, Jake. I toss you for this little one. Oh, now, he, he was only funning, ma'am. Wasn't you, Carlos? See, si. I don't mean it, senorita. Why, Mr. Carter wouldn't tolerate no such thing. Would he, Carlos? He wouldn't tolerate it. Now, now why don't you get on your horse and come on back with us, hmm? Where are you going? We are going back to Holcomb to get our money. I would like to go to the uh, cavalry headquarters. Why, well, a woman can't travel alone in this here hostile territory, ma'am. Why, just, just as soon as we get our money, we, we could give you escort right up to Colonel Stanton's tent. Won't we, Carlos? See. Si.
Well, where's the pack horse? Pack horse? Yes, the pack horse. She doesn't have it, have they? We didn't see that pack horse anywhere. It figures they wanted the woman more than the horse. Ah. As of now, both of you keep your hands off of her. We can go back and look for some more. Forget it. I want to get the money and hide out for a while. Why do we have to lay low at Holcomb's now, boss? Because Buffalo Horn has us outnumbered. What are we going to do about her? Take her along. She can be useful. Gee, she okay? Can't she call her? <laughs> Cook, maybe, huh? <laughs> <laughs> And the sheriff sees I broke into this store. And I says, Sheriff, I was just looking for a pair of shoes. And he says, Jake, if you ain't careful, you're going to wind up on Boot Hill. And I says, Sheriff, I already been up on Boot Hill, and I couldn't find a pair to fit me. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? To get some water. I'll help you. Sit down. Carlos, you go. Where now? We get it together. Carlos. Just the water. We just get out of here. I've got to bring him back alive, Sally. Or else we'll have a full-scale Indian war. What are you going to do? Get you out of sight. Come on. Sally, if anything goes wrong, a pack horse is behind that building. Thank you, Captain. You been in here? Leach, you better go get that bucket of water. 
Mm, Carlos will fetch it sooner or later. Go get it. Stupid idiots. Get around behind him. Well, get going. You better blow the bugle for the old 33rd, Captain. The only call out blow is taps. And when you're six feet under, you have to get me back first. Just how do you plan on taking me back alive? Honor, if you didn't kill those Indians, you've got nothing to worry about. Oh, no, Captain. That won't work. You see, I figure I'd lose either way. Besides, you kill me, you make Buffalo Horn very unhappy. And you know the Shoshones like to take their own revenge. I could have killed you back there. Now, why don't you give me the same break? Yeah, huh? Stand at attention, Captain. Drop your gun. Tactically, uh, this makes me the winner. You know, Carter, you might have made a good officer. Oh, I uh, think I am a good officer. About face. As the superior officer, you should be giving the commands. What's the matter? Forgotten your manual of arms? I'll refresh your memory. Ready? Aim. I will tell Black Feather that Shoshone and one who walked tall bring justice together.